Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Ursula Barry, and I'm linked to the Social Justice and Gender Studies Programme in UCD. And I'm also a member of the Expert Advisory Group to the Citizens' Assembly. And um, so what I'm going to look at today is I'm going to look at the care economy. Um, and what would it look like if we placed the care economy at the centre of Irish society? Um, and th the first thing I'm going to look at is the nature of care and care work. And how do we define it or how do we think about it? Um, and I think the first point to make is that everybody at different stages of their life cares for or has care needs provided by others. So the, we're, all, we're, we're all central um, to the care economy and the care economy is central to all of us. Nobody is outside of it. Um, the second thing I want to look at is how care provision systems operate and they operate differently in different countries. And you have systems that uh, have a different mix of, of ways of provision. Um, the marketplace where care services are bought, the state as a provider of social care infrastructure, and then families and communities, which are centrally involved in the provision of care, particularly in Ireland. And in fact, in Ireland, the state has uh, uh, played a very limited role. And the second thing I want to come on to is the demographic change that has happened over recent years that has done or, or should have placed care more centrally on the policy agenda. The first thing is um, that we have an aging population, longer life expectancy, which is a very positive development, but it does put more pressure on care services. We have a smaller family size, fewer child rearing years, and that's linked to more women in paid work. Uh, and that's also driven by the fact that we have a um, very significant proportion of dual income households, partly driven by the cost of housing. And there are longer hours of work, as well as a demand for flexible work, and the other thing is we have a significant migration into the Irish economy, but that's something I'm going to come back to. But the other more recent change that has affected us all is COVID-19. And COVID-19 has, has had significant consequences for care and care services. And in a way, it possibly makes us rethink and revalue, um, revalue care. Because the pandemic has highlighted how societies um, are inter interdependent and care dependent. Um, and also it brought a serious curtailment of care and educational services at different times over the last 10 months. And that created uh, an increase in unpaid work in the home. And there was a kind of sudden withdrawal of a full spectrum of care supports, disability supports, um, you know, uh, day, daycare centers, uh, home care supports, all kinds of supports were suddenly withdrawn. It's also interesting to point out that over 70% of frontline workers are women and that they were particularly vulnerable because of the concentration in the hospitality and uh, retail sectors of the economy. Um, so one of the things that I want to emphasize is how the care economy is central to every discussion on gender equality in Ireland. And that in, in, in order to uh, discuss the gender equality aspect of the care. We need to think about how care could be made more visible and tackle the disadvantage that is associated with taking on care responsibilities. So that means looking at reform of social protection, uh, re-evaluation of care work, uh, and the sharing of care responsibilities, and also the achieving of a, a greater work-life balance. So historically in Ireland, there has been a lack of state responsibility and funding of care. And some argue that we are now in, in a crisis of care. But one way or the other is there is a qualitatively different response needed uh, to the care provision in the Irish context. Um, and that's because a lot of things are, have shifted in the, our cultural and social context as well. The gender nature of care is being contested and the over-reliance on unpaid work is also being contested. We have fewer family carers because with smaller families, there's fewer people on a generation by generation basis to uh, provide care. We are increasingly reliant on migrant care workers. And then there's a question of new models of care uh, and also the uh, need for additional, significant additional funding. So there are some dimensions of care and caring that is important to um, look at the framework of care provision, if you like. Um, that operates in different countries. We have the care needs of children uh, in early childhood, after school care, special needs, for example, the care needs of older people for home-based care, supported housing and residential care, and the care needs of people with disabilities for adapted housing, 
for the support for independent living, home-based care, and then physical and intellectual disability supports for, for both uh, forms of disability. There's also day centers, respite care, age-specific um, care services, physical and mental health services, and increasingly a need for 24-hour care in, in particular circumstances. One of the things that COVID-19 has highlighted is the importance of the principle of what's called decongregation, the creation of more independent spaces, whether it's in residential care settings or within uh, individual homes, but that con concept of decongregation, more um, uh, individualized spaces. So we can think about the principles of a new model of care. Um, and I think the most important principle is to move from a system of dependency to one of flexible care supports. And then what would that mean in practice? It would mean respect for the dignity and autonomy of care recipients, recognition of the needs of carers and their families, independent adaptive and supportive housing, and the continued important role in the community, voluntary and NGO sector, and the importance also of one-to-one -one assistance services and long-term needs. So the question of care, um, it's important, it's, it's good to remember, was centrally involved in the setting up of the Citizens' Assembly on gender equality. It was linked to the debate around the Irish Constitution that was carried out in, in the Constitutional Convention. And they looked at the rigid definitions of women's role uh, in the Constitution and no mention at all of men's role. So the a debate took place on, on uh, placing a value of care into the Constitution. And the present articles in the Constitution that they were concerned with, I, I have um, uh, put, put up there for you to look at. Um, but the question is whether the Constitution should remain as it is, should those clauses be deleted or amended to more gender neutral language, to say parents rather than women, for example, or, changing, or a change to a specific focus on care and caring. But this is a question that we're going to come back to in the Citizen Assembly that will consider these questions at its February 2021 uh, meeting. So we'll get time to consider that in greater detail. So that's it for the moment. Thanks very much for your time.